Greetings everyone! This is a quick promo before the video begins. If you're new to the channel and you didn't know it yet, I am actually an author in addition to being a YouTuber, and I have two books that you can get on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1 and The Occult Mafia. The first is sort of a bizarre, absurdist kaiju anime mashup, and the other is a horror noir story with a hint of a western thrown in there. They're both set in the same universe, and at this point have received mostly positive reviews, so you might want to check them out. I've provided Amazon links for both of them down in the description. They're both available in either paperback or Amazon Kindle, and Operation Red Dragon is also available in audiobook form. So if either of these strike your fancy and you want to support a struggling artist, feel free to go down and check out either one or both of them. Alright, the shameless self-promotion is out of the way, we can get on with the video. Thank you all for your support. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and I don't know if you've heard, but Animaniacs is getting a reboot. Yes, Animaniacs, one of the greatest cartoons of the 1990s, is coming back with the original voice cast, or at least most of the original voice cast returning, a large chunk of the writers, Steven Spielberg is still producing. It's something I'm looking forward to, with a sense of nervousness, of course, because rebooting something is always, you know, it's kind of a roll of the dice. Sometimes it can turn out good, sometimes it can turn out awful. And I'm hoping Animaniacs turns out to be one of the good ones. Supposedly they're doing this because the DuckTales reboot is doing so well for Disney, and Warner Brothers decided they want a slice of that pie, so they're making this Animaniacs series exclusive to Hulu, which is owned by Disney. We can sort that out another day. For right now, I want to do a little speculation. You see, a recent teaser was released, which has some rough storyboard animatic style scenes in it, and some video of the voice cast recordings. And I noted something about the dialogue that we see on display. In typical Animaniacs fashion, it is very, very self-aware. So the characters are talking about the fact that their show has been gone for a long time and is now coming back. And it has me wondering if that might be part of what the show is going to do. That's why I want to speculate here. I want to speculate on how the first episode of the Animaniacs reboot will go down. Because I have an idea in my head and I want to share it with people. And if it turns out to be right, you heard it here first. But I have no proof that it's going to be right and I can't guarantee it's going to be right. I'm also not so attached to this that I'll be disappointed if it's wrong. I'm just throwing this out there because I'm a writer, and if I were writing Animaniacs and rebooting it, this is what I would do. So here's my theory. My theory is that the first episode of the Animaniacs reboot will be about rebooting Animaniacs. The characters clearly know that they've been off the air for a long time and now they're coming back, but they're getting ready to do the show. The gang's all together again, well, most of them. Apparently there are rumors that Hello Nurse and Minerva Mink aren't going to be there. Not that Minerva ever had the largest role in the show anyway. But those are just rumors at that point, I don't know if we know that for certain. But anyway, cast is all back together, the writers are all back together, the show is ready to go and pick up where it left off, and then the studio executives come in and say those three words that every entertainer hates to hear. We have notes. You see, the animation landscape has changed significantly since the 1990s. It's no longer about doing episodic shows with sketch comedy or bursts of action. No, these days cartoons are all about world building and character development and long form storytelling and mysteries and all that other junk. Not necessarily bad, let me tell you. But, according to the executives, if Animaniacs is going to survive in this current environment, it's got to get with the times, and it's got to do its own long-form story. None of this vaudeville sketch stuff. So, they have no choice, because the executives are the one in charge, and they're funding the show. So, first half of the episode, they try to pull that sort of thing. They try to do an episode where they are setting up a longer plot and having specifically placed moments of drama and setting up mysteries, questions to be revealed later. 
But this is the cast of Animaniacs we're talking about. They cannot take anything seriously. And before it gets very far, the whole thing is derailed and the producers have to step in and shut the whole thing down. So that experiment was a bust, but all is not necessarily lost. The producers once again meet with the cast and crew of Animaniacs and say, well, you completely ruined that, but turns out the boys in marketing research did some marketing research and there actually is still an audience for silly, directionless comedy shows, and particularly when it comes to cartoons like what you guys want to do. So you want to tell jokes? Go ahead. You can tell whatever jokes you want. There is an audience for that. Go ahead and go crazy. So, problem solved, right? Not necessarily. They start trying to do their old ways, but that requires them to do a lot of setup for long-form gags and going highbrow with their satire and their commentary. And then the producers step in and shut it down again because that's not the comedy they were talking about. After all, modern cartoons are fueled by meme-tastic comedy that comes in short, quick bursts that are easily digestible by an audience that's completely lost its attention span due to spending all of its time on the internet. So now Animaniacs is doing comedy wrong all of a sudden. And this is what finally gets the characters to say, you know what, nuts to this. We had a formula and it worked. And more than worked, it made us timeless. And quite frankly, the whole reason we're getting rebooted is because modern audiences want to see that formula brought back and applied to these current times. And you know what? If that's what they want, I think we should give it to them. That's why we're here, after all. And we're going to do this show our way, the way we always have. And from that point on, the status quo is reestablished, and Animaniacs proceeds as it always has, just with a bit more of a modern flavor when it comes to what they're talking about. And possibly, that might set up a meta-narrative of the producers always coming back and trying to push the show in a particular direction, making them the overarching antagonists of an overarching plot that doesn't necessarily interfere with the rest of the show's format. Possibly. It seems like the sort of thing they would do to satirize that sort of thing. Anyway, just wanted to get that out there. We don't have an official trailer with actual animation as yet, and we're still a couple of months away from the debut. But I am nervously anticipating it. I really hope it turns out well. I am a big Animaniacs fan. Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain, Freakazoid, even going back to Tiny Toon Adventures, I was a big fan of that whole era. And it'd be a shame if they messed it up in modern times. It wouldn't be the first time such things have been messed up, but I'm holding out hope that they didn't do that. I really am holding out hope that they have done it right, and who knows? Maybe I did predict how it's going to start out. But we will see in November, which is, I believe, when it's premiering. You know, the irony isn't lost on me that the show once did an entire segment about people who spend all their time on the internet obsessing over cartoons and going over every little detail. Yeah. I admit I'm one of those people who needs to be part of the Please, Please, Please Get a Life Foundation. Well, those are my thoughts. You think it's a good idea? Bad idea? You have your own ideas of what might start off this reboot? Feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omniviewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe, then go down to the description to find links to follow us on DeviantArt, Patreon, and Twitter. While you're there, you'll also find the Amazon links for the original novels Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, and The Occult Mafia. Two books I think you'll really enjoy. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.